The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, one of the most important games of the 16-bit era, and a title often heralded as one of the greatest Zelda titles ever made. Sure, we have the likes of Breath of the Wild and the Ocarina of Time, but before either of these classics, we had this brilliant Super Nintendo outing. Despite now seeing release well over 30 years ago, this is still one of the best games of all time. Building on the formula established in the original 1986 entry, Link to the Past contained more dungeons, enemies, complex puzzles and story elements than any Zelda game before it, providing yet another reason to purchase the then state-of-the-art Super Nintendo. However, what if I told you that owning the 16-bit beast was not the only way to enjoy this legendary adventure, but that it could also be played on 8-bit Nintendo hardware as well? That's right, there were lunatics out there who would create a conversion of the title so that it could be enjoyed on the NES instead. So in today's upload we will spotlight this bizarre odyssey. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is a link to the past, but for the NES. Yeah. Ah yes, Link to the Past, the epic Legend of Zelda game that I grew up with, functioning as one of the most fun titles of my childhood. Those were certainly the days, weren't they? Good, simple, addictive, top-down greatness that remains captivating to play even now. There were no unnecessary distractions that mirrored the hardships of real life, such as cooking, disgracefully bad, unedible meals for example. Dubious food intensifies. But fear not, my dear beleaguered soul, as if you are grappling with the Herculean tasks of penny pinching, culinary improvement, or perhaps even reducing stress of knocking a good meal together, today's sponsor HelloFresh is gallantly offering its assistance in alleviating these issues. America's number one meal kit beckons, promising to usher you into a realm of unparalleled delicious delight, with its trove of fresh ingredients and culinary concoctions meticulously crafted by the hands of seasoned chefs. All the better at a price point that will not offend your modest sensibilities, all conveniently dispatched to your doorstep no less. Using this service, I for example recently cooked this amazing roast beef meal with pigs in blankets, gravy roast potatoes, honey roasted root veg and green beans. Ooh, a delicious succulent meal any time of the year in my opinion. So no more staring gormlessly at your fridge, pondering what to make for dinner, as with HelloFresh you can choose from over 30 calorie smart or protein smart recipes weekly, delivered with fresh ingredients right to your home, sparing you of any bother. As a delightful bonus, subscribers unlock free dessert for life, ensuring a sweet ending to every meal, quite the refined treat for those with discerning tastes, wouldn't you agree? Simply peruse their selection, designate a delivery date and relinquish the burden of meal planning and shopping into their capable hands. Upon receiving your box of meticulously portioned ingredients, embark upon your gastronomic journey with ease. Truly a delectable proposition not to be overlooked. Click the link in the description or use my code and get 16 free meals plus free dessert for life while subscription is active. Make your life more delicious and convenient right now. No one wants to look and feel like Breath of a Wild Link on a bad day. Linking back to our own past, most of us have extremely fond memories of playing many classic games. Titles like Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, the original Sonic the Hedgehog for the Mega Drive and Final Fantasy VII for the Sony PlayStation. All examples of games that sparked joy in my heart. But did you know that versions of every one of these glorious greats was remade to run on the NES of all systems? Looking at NES Final Fantasy VII on here last week, you will be able to recall that, unsurprisingly, Pirates and bootleggers would regularly opt to try and profit off of whatever games were delivering the greatest success stories. So given what an impact A Link to the Past made, of course this would be yet another game that would be replicated and demade to run on rudimentary 8-bit hardware. That way, despite being originally programmed for the expensive Super NES, thanks to bootleggers a title made in its image could be sold in the developing world. Countries with lax to non-existent piracy laws without their economies or trade infrastructure for newer hardware to be more affordable would receive revisions of well-known titles. This meant that Famic clones made in China and Taiwan would continue to flourish years after the release of Nintendo's original 8-bit hardware as were bespoke experiences made to enjoy on these dubious devices. Released in 2004, 13 years after A Link to the Past's original Super Nintendo release, this strange yet fairly faithful looking game was published by an entity known as Fuzu Waxin Science and Technology Company Limited. 
Originally founded back in November of 1993, Waxing came into existence in mainland China after a joint venture between Microgenius, a manufacturer of Famiclone hardware, and Chengdu Taijing Dong computers came to an end. Waxin would originally focus on creating Chinese translated versions of existing Japanese games, such as the original Fire Emblem for example, but would slowly branch out into developing and publishing clones, hacks and bootlegs. Your clones are very impressive, you must be very proud. In the 8-bit version of A Link to the Past's case, the development of this title would be outsourced to Mars Productions, a Chinese development house specialising in Famiclone games. As for Mars Productions, they were originally the software division of a Chinese education computer manufacturer known as Yancheng, before gaining their independence in the mid-90s and beginning a run of developing games published by Waxing, birthing an 8-bit version of A Link to the Past in the process. But rather than creating a game from scratch, being pirates, assets would be plundered from other sources in order to make this conversion as quickly and easily as possible. Unsurprisingly, this would include the game's box art and cartridge label art, which in a bizarre twist utilises artwork taken from a Korean MMO known as Linentia. That's an obscure fact for you. Waxin must have just decided that Link's of the Past needed more waifus to have wider appeal, but who really knows? Upon activating this enigmatic anomaly, players are greeted with a slideshow accompanied by text, earnestly attempting to mirror the introductory sequence of the original 16-bit rendition of A Link to the Past. Once traversing through this presentation, players encounter a title screen that faithfully emulates its Super Nintendo predecessor. Notably, the Chinese title screen within the game translates to the Japanese title, rather than the Western one. In Japan, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past was marketed and sold as Zelda The Triforce of Gods. So the bootleg goes by this name instead of the one most viewers will be familiar with. Gameplay commences with Fidelity as Link departs from his bed to embark on his journey towards the depths of Hyrule Castle. However, even in these initial stages, peculiarities become apparent. For instance, Link Sprite assumes an eerie yellowish-white hue, lending him a sort of spectral appearance. How very frightful. Speaking of discrepancies, further changes emerge in the realm of music. Instead of customary 8-bit renditions of A Link to the Past soundtrack, typical in such bootlegs, we are presented with an entirely divergent score that seldom aligns with the gameplay's mood to the same degree. Moreover, the sequence of this soundtrack shifts each time the player transitions to a new screen. To the credit of the creators though, we have to compliment this game's striking resemblance to the real Link's of the Past, with it in many respects often surpassing the look of the official 1986 Zelda title that could be found on NES hardware in graphical prowess. The Super Nintendo sprite work, backgrounds and more have been adeptly replicated and integrated into this strange Famiclone title. However, inherent in any unofficial clone intended as a backport to older hardware are hardware limitations that inevitably impact the game's quality. This becomes apparent from the outset, particularly in the jerky movement animations of enemies, unlike the smooth traversal seen in the Super Nintendo original. The movements here are noticeably stilted, lacking the fluid animation frames of a 16-bit gem. Speaking of movement, Link's mobility is restricted compared to the original game. In the classic Super NES top-down version, Link enjoys full directional movement, whereas in this iteration, he is confined to basic cardinal directions, up, down, left or right, lacking the additional diagonal movements present in the refined iconic video game from which this one draws inspiration. The disparity extends beyond mere locomotion. Combat experiences a significant decline in quality as well. Striking enemies with Link's sword fails to yield the satisfying sound effects indicative of successful hits, and sound cues overall are notably absent. Even the act of breaking pots occurs in eerie silence, detracting from the usual immersive experience. Moreover, combat dynamics are mared by the absence of damage knockback when Link sustains a hit, allowing adversaries to relentlessly assail him, swiftly depleting his life bar and leading to frustrating moments for players. Furthermore, I'd argue that without prior exposure to the 16-bit version of this game, navigating this rendition could easily lead to confusion regarding the next course of action. Yet, in the realm of NES Zelda games, perpetual exploration and puzzling out the next step seems par for the course. Let's be honest boys, the 1986 title and its follow-up were fraught with cryptic elements. 
As expected, similar to other Chinese and Taiwanese adaptations we've discussed previously, substantial portions of the original game were omitted or altered in this 8-bit conversion. Still, thinking about it, such alterations aren't uncommon even in official conversions. Look how lacking the dreadful Game Boy version of Street Fighter 2 is for example. Omissions include the absence of Turtle Rock and Ganon's Tower Dungeon in this Chinese iteration. Additionally, the layout of dungeons in the Dark World differs, and only 6 crystals are required to access the Endgame Pyramid, as opposed to the 7 in the SNES counterpart. Adding a touch of humour, it's worth noting that the game accidentally features a particularly amusing typo that appears whenever Link succumbs in combat, with the words, GOM OVER, gracing the screen. How very Bimmy and Jimmy indeed. Years following the initial Chinese release, dedicated enthusiasts from the online ROM hacking community took it upon themselves to enhance this game further by translating this text into English. Spearheaded by an internet user known as Pack and Sack Dave, this effort rendered this peculiar rendition of The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past more accessible than ever before. Despite its numerous flaws, witnessing The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past running on the NES remains a remarkable feat. As previously noted, this game arguably boasts superior graphical fidelity compared to the official NES Zelda titles, making it a noteworthy addition to the annals of bootleg history. I don't know about you, but after all of this exploration of bizarre Zelda history, it's made me so hungry that I could eat an Octorok. But fortunately, I can go one better and pop downstairs and devour another succulent HelloFresh meal. If you get as hungry as I do, click the link in the description to avoid those dirty dubious dishes. Once you've done that, check out my content on these other bootlegs. Cheerio!